All right, guys, I'm gonna have to be brief. I got some storms coming in, unfortunately. I did a little shooting today in the rain, and I was really impressed with the performance of some optics and rifles. I just thought I'd briefly talk it over real quick. Maybe compare these two optics, what's going on here. So first of all, I have a Savage 12 FV with a Magpul bipod and a Burris XTR2. It is a mil reticle uh, scope. That's a 50 millimeter objective. Parallax goes down to 50 yards. That's 223. And then I have a CZ 455. It is not the 457, the newer model. This is the old, older model, I guess, now. And this one has the Athlon. Or first of all, it also has the Magpul on it as well. Same bipod, which for a bolt gun is kind of interesting. I'll get to that in another review. But I have this Athlon 4.5 to 30. It is the uh, Ares ETR. Really a spectacular optic. Very, very good. The parallax goes down to 25 yards. It's kind of like an NRL 22 dream uh, optic. The differences between these would be, first of all, the illumination feature. Uh, the Burris drains batteries fast. Doesn't have as good illumination. The Athlon maybe drains batteries slower and it's much brighter. It's daylight bright. Turrets obviously are a little different. You're gonna have more elevation and range of adjustment in the Athlon than you are in the Burris. The MSRP is similar. It's within $100 for the two of them. At least it, it used to be. I think now this is gonna be getting replaced this next season. I bet you Athlon will come out with a 2.0 of that as well. This is four to 20. Again, that right there, the Athlon is four and a half to 30. So you're getting quite a bit more magnification in that range. Uh, optics wise, they are size wise. The Burris is actually a hair bit longer with a 50 millimeter objective. Then I put on the scope shade and it's longer, uh, even more so. And the Athlon has a 56 millimeter objective and much, much clearer glass. That's probably the first place I'll start. Much clearer glass in the Athlon. I'm very impressed with it. I don't even know if I want to do this, try to get it in the phone, but it is, uh, it's not gonna work. It's too hard to do. It's spectacular, very, very clear. I'm extremely impressed. I've heard quite a few people compare it to a Schmidt and Bender, um, maybe just lacking a hair of warmth in the image, but color-wise, it's very true. Uh, the parallax seems to be true at greater distances, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that the 25 yard line here has not been true for me. Maybe it's a misplacement, mismarking, I don't know. But the rest of it seems to be fairly true at distance. The turrets themselves, like I said, stainless steel, very easy to reset. You have a locking windage turret, which doesn't matter to me, but a lot of people do like that, so that's cool. They're kind of big, but you've, you've got a big range of adjustment with that. They're easy to grab onto, easy to dial and spin, and with that, they're a little bit easy to over-rotate or over-dial. A little bit easy, that's not a big deal to me. Uh, the magnification ring, pretty smooth. Pretty smooth. I like it. I don't feel any slop and tolerances all around that scope. I think it's, uh, I think it's really magnificent. Best scope I've ever owned. That's for sure. You go to the Burris, which is also a very good scope. Uh, you know, a couple things. I actually like the feel of the clicks better in here, but I know that the tracking isn't as true as with the Athlon. It's very, very good. This is extremely good. But this, at this point, and where optics are at, this is going to be considered a tier two optic now. Uh, and I would say the Athlon. Is probably tier one and a half. It's very close to being one of the best, but you're still gonna have Schmidt and Bender beating them out in a lot of ways. Uh, Burris has another model of their XTR coming out. It's the XTR3. I'm really curious to see what they do, but I know and I could guarantee that they will go down to a 25 yard parallax versus the 50 yard minimum here. Just for usability, a lot of guys with their 22 rimfire rifles are looking for you know, a, a closer distance. So I think we'll see that. The 34 millimeter tubes are about the same on them. Again, bigger objective on the Athlon than you have on the Burris. The eye box on both of them, if you go to max power, which is 20 for one and 30 for the other, it's pretty boxy, it's pretty tight. You really have to be in on the rifle at the right spot to use it correctly. And that's not a big deal to me. I actually don't care. I don't mind that. Um, think of a couple other things. You know, uh, something that I will complain about with the Burris is I did get this back from customer service recently and the issue was I had broken the magnification ring, or I shouldn't say I did, a rifle did. It was on a Crossman air rifle. I'd called up Burris and they claimed that it was air rifle rated. It was not air rifle rated and it took months for them to get this thing back to me. It took so long. I couldn't believe it and that didn't impress me and you know the magnification ring breaking is just frustrating. 
So, uh, I forget where I'm going with this. <laughs> Anyways, I zeroed the rifle out today and I shot some good groups, I'll show you in a second. But one of the issues I had was, I'm not sure if they optically zeroed the rifle before sending it back. I'm not sure what happened. But what happened for my zeroing was, I'm one mil high, um, or I have to aim one mil low, I'll, I'll say, at 100 yards. I did not have that issue before. I'm not sure what happened or if they didn't send it back optically zeroed. But when I went to use the zero stop and, and feature and lift it up and get more um, downward movement, I was out. I was totally out. So I don't know what happened. The ironic thing is it just put me at a 300 yard perfect zero. I'm going to leave it there. I'm okay with that. But I don't know. I don't know how long I'll be okay with that. It'll probably bother me quite a bit. Overall, it's been a fantastic optic. The reticle is a little boring to me at this point i like better reticles than that but i know how to read it very well and i've shot this out to 1100 yards with this 223 and you know the magnification is pretty good it's pretty usable you're going to get some mirage issues obviously and it it's a, a thicker walled scope so i think it resists some of that mirage a little better than other optics but you just can't use it past 10 power at that distance without having some mirage on a hot day uh, so overall i'm pretty happy with the optic it comes with a sunshade, it comes with a couple things that the Athline doesn't actually, which is cool. Some really nice scope caps, which Burris did include when they returned the rifle, as they should. Because it broke and it was their fault, not mine. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't have much more to say about it. If you have questions about it, go ahead and comment down below. I'll tell you though, these can be had now in the 5 to 20, or 5 to 25 model, or 4 to 25 model. Can't remember which one it is. The one that's one up from this, a little more magnification. You can have those for like 590 right now, 580, something like that. That is a killer deal for a 34 millimeter uh, optic, something with that kind of big tube. I mean, that's a big window. It's a big step up from a 30 mil, and there's a decent range of adjustment. Right now, let's see what I got. So there's 10. Looks like I got 18 mils, so I happen to know off the top of my head that'll take me to 1500 yards with a 223. Not bad, but I've seen better, and this is where I've seen better. So the Athlon is pretty fantastic. This is something I shoot out to a quarter mile, and I'm really happy with the performance of this little 22 after 5,000 rounds. Getting to the mag or the uh, adjustment here, I believe I have 22 and a half. So I got 10, 22 and a half. I have 22.5 mils of adjustment. And then in the reticle, there's a minimum of 10 mils that you can use, and that will get me out to a quarter mile. So that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with the optic uh, always. I, I can't even think of something that I wish was different. Maybe, maybe a 10 yard parallax, that could be cool if air gun guys wanted to use it. I would like to see if that could survive an air gun. Maybe it should have come with an adjustment uh, or a cattail extender for the price that you're paying. But then again, you're getting like premium glass, stainless turrets, 34 millimeter, you know, a little bit of custom color. It's not black, it's a different color. And a 50 millimeter objective. It's, it's really hard for me to find something to complain about, about this optic. I think it's probably the best deal on the market right now. I can't think of anything that's beating this guy out. So if you have any questions or comments about these two, go ahead and post them, uh, post them down in the, the comment section. I'll just show you some groups real quick before I go. So today, again, I was shooting in the rain. Now the sun's coming out, which is awesome. For the Fiocchi 50 grain at 100 yards, shooting uh, four shots in a quarter inch, and then I had a flyer. This came out to be a half inch group. Again, four shots in about three eighths inch group, half inch. Uh, it might have been 9 16 overall now that I think of it. So that's five shot groups for everything on the page at 100 yards. Not bad. I've seen worse out of $219 rifles. So Savage, that rifle is amazing. Over 5,000 rounds through it. And it's still giving me basically quarter inch performance. 3 eighths inch uh, is probably more realistic. Let's see. So then we go to the Aguila. This is when I'm shooting bulk box. I'm not shooting Lupa Center X or anything expensive. This stuff is four cents a round. And these are the groups I'm getting at 100 yards, which are respectable. This one, uh, this was a 3 8 inch four shot group with a flyer. Could have been the ammo, could have been the rifle, definitely could have been me. Comes out to an inch. Another, uh, this is a 7 8 inch group. You know, three of them pretty, pretty well bulked together. I don't know, is it ammo, is it wind? 
It was it was windy and stormy and I was shooting in the rain, so it's hard for me to tell. Again, three of them together, two oddballs, easily could have been me. And uh, then another, these, this was uh, three-fourths of an inch with a flyer down here. So I'm pretty happy with that performance. I don't know many 22s in this price point that are performing that way. And I have to say the optic makes it so much easier. I'm not shooting tighter than when I had other optics on there. I've tried an Athlon BTR, the Aries BTR 4.5 to 27. And I didn't necessarily shoot tighter than I did with that. I've had the Burris on there. I'm not necessarily shooting tighter. But it's so clear, it is easier by far to see and to engage the target. So I'm super happy with the performance of these rifles today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe.